Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. And today's problem is problem 1209. Remove all adjacent duplicates in string part two. Okay, not part one, part two. The first part is a bit more trivial than this one. It's a, a slightly easier equivalent. Um, but I, I figure this one is just digestible enough for us to be able to, to kind of cover this one and, and the second one, or the first one, excuse me, can kind of take care of itself uh, consequentially. And so if you haven't tried the problem, pause the video, give it a read, give it a try, and then come on right back as always. Uh, but I, uh, I figured that at this point, let's just dive straight into and see what we have in store today. So essentially we're given a string S and we are given an integer K, uh, which represents how many uh, duplicate removals we need to make or how many uh, multiple appearances of a certain letter we can have before we gotta pop it off entirely. And so basically what it's saying is we repeatedly make K duplicate removals on S until we no longer can. Uh, we need to return the final string after the duplicate removals have happened and we're guaranteed a unique answer. Okay, so if we get something like A, B, C, D, K equals two means that we are allowed at most, uh, or yeah, at most one repetition of any letter. Once we see two of them, we have to pop both instances off. In this case, we have no repetitions that are, are um, adjacent to each other and so we would return a b c d uh, if we look at something like this example though if we if we kind of take a look at this d and, and we see okay the d's on its own we're, we're allowed three or just under three d's so one should be fine but then we come across this situation with a, a triple e so we need to say okay let's let's get rid of that because that's gonna mean a bueno. uh then we get a d okay two more b's fine a triple c okay we got to get rid of that um b d double A, okay, those all seem fine for now, kind of on first glance, but where things get a bit more interesting is kind of in uh, in the next layer down. So uh, I almost think about this problem like the game of Candy Crush, if you guys are familiar with it. Once you get a certain number of, uh, of common items or candies in a row, you need to crush them, and then you'll, you'll have this cascading effect of other, other items falling, and if those, uh, you know, pile up in a, a certain collection or arrangement, then those will break. And we keep going continuously until there's no, there are no longer any combinations that need to be popped off. This is really similar. So in this example, I said, you know, we, we saw these triple E's and these, these triple C's. So if we get rid of these, uh, the E's and the C's, we're left with D, D, B, 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 D, A, A. Okay, but now we look at this and we say, okay, well, but now we got a triple B. So now we got to walk back through, get rid of the B's and, and okay, that should be better. Uh, we get triple D, A, A, and it's like, oh damn, well, now we got a triple D again. Now we got to get rid of that. And finally we're left with A, A. And so that's how we get from here down to A, A when our K value is three. Uh, similarly, you guys can walk through this example, but it, tomato, tomato, um, exact same idea. Um, yeah, I, I, I will say one thing to take into account just to, just to be clear here, because this got me the first time around when I did it. See these triple I's over here, for example, and K is two. Uh, the first time around, we'd actually pop two of the I's. So we wouldn't get all three of them. We'd strictly do two. Once we see the second one, we get rid of it somehow. And, and again, I'm, I'm kind of using this loosely, this terminology, because um, as y'all should be familiar by now, strings are immutable in, I believe, most languages, but Python, definitely they're immutable, meaning that we can't modify it directly. So we're going to need to do something. We're going to need to do some sort of walkthrough, use maybe another data structure to figure out what we're piecing together and what we're scrapping. So we'll kind of get the gears turning there. Um, I was going to say in a moment, but hey, may as well do it now. No time like the present. So let's think about, oops, this is what I wanted. Um, again, this example is kind of was trivial. We can just do a quick walkthrough of, of ABCD and we see that we never really get any issues. Now, if we were to take the walkthrough, and, and let's maybe kind of think conceptually here for a second. What I could do is say, let me create a new string, and I'll call that string, you know, I'll, I'll start as an empty string. Okay, we'll start an empty string. And maybe I could start walking through this way from left to right. And as I'm walking left to right, I can simply maybe keep two pointers and say, okay, if I, um, if the, the, the pointers all kind of, my right pointer, my right pointer kind of keeps pointing to, to the same value as what it was before. Once I hit K of them, then I don't want to attach that to my result string. Otherwise, let's pop that value on. So uh, if I do one walkthrough like that, and I'm going this way, what that might tell me is something like, okay, well, I see this D and this D is on its own. So uh, maybe I'll start with this. And then 
Uh, I keep going and I say, oh, well, that's three E's. I don't want those. It's way too many because, you know, we can only have uh, two or less. So none of that. Uh, I see a single D, so I'll, I'll add the D. And then I see these double B's and I say, okay, I can, I can add double B's. We can afford two. Uh, C, 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 no way. Can't do that. Uh, but a B we do see, and then a D on its own, and then two A's, and again, this is where we found ourselves. Now, again, this is kind of like the first approach I was talking about. Now we need to walk through again. And because potentially, now we've got more triples. So, same thing here. We'd say, okay, well, this double's okay. This triple's no good. D is a single, that's okay. And then this A is a double, that's fine. But then again, if we walk through, we find more triples. Um, Again, since K is three specifically here, we keep kind of going down and the time complexity can grow really quickly here. So is that an acceptable solution? Eh, it's the brute force one. It's one that you want to mention in your interview and say, you know, maybe this is a, a naive approach that we can take, uh, especially if it's something just to get the, the gears turning because you're not quite sure how to solve it just yet. Now, is there a smarter way to do this though? The answer is yes. And that's why you're here to find out about that. So let's, uh, Let's think about how we do that. What data structure can we think of that can potentially help us keep track of items as we go and then pop them off as we, as we decide systematically that we no longer need them? And so I think the key there and kind of the hint is in that, that popping off piece. And if it's not immediately intuitive, a stack would do, it would work wonders for us here in this question. The interesting thing though is that we may not quite, it may not quite be obvious how to exactly use that stack. So let's think about this. Maybe I said, um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll start a stack here and I'll say, well, I'm gonna, let me put in every letter that I see and then I'll pop it off if I get too many of them. Um, so I can tell myself something like I can put in a D. Um, okay, and then I see an E. Okay, is this E equal to what we previously had? No. Um, what about this C? It is okay. Well, do I have K of them? Well, I have one, I have two. Uh, that's not me. So nope, I've only got two, so I'm good so far. I see another E here. I throw that E and I go, oh, okay. Again, we check behind us. Oh, damn, I did find three E's now. So pop, 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 get rid of all of those, okay? All those three will be gone. Now, we're here. We're at the D, right? Uh, so I see the D, okay, that's fine. Again, we, we go back by one. Our ray isn't even long enough to have a triplet yet, so so we're good. Uh, I see a B, okay. Is, is this equal to the previous set of, nope, we're good. I see another B. Okay, is this one equal? Yes, it is, okay. Um, do we have three of them? Well, no, it looks like we only have two, so we're good. Um, and we keep going with this. We see three Cs. Again, once we see the third, we say, never mind, popping those off, I don't want them. Now, when I get to this B right over here, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna say, let me put this B in here, and again, let me retroactively kind of check. Let me take steps back. Um, so I see, okay, I see, I see a second B. Oh, damn, I see a third one. So what are we going to do about it? Pop, 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 get rid of all of these, all three of them gone. Then, oops, and I want to get rid of them. Then we get this D over here. And same thing, we check behind us and say, how many do I have? Well, I got one, I found a second. Oh, crap, I found a third. Don't like those, get rid of all of them. What's left here? We've got an A, we've got another A, we check again, there's only two of them and we're good. Our final result then is just gonna be take this and do, do some sort of join. So do like a empty string dot join the, the array. Bob's your uncle, everyone's happy. So we're gonna do a, a slight modification of this approach. And the reason that I wanna do a slight modification is that I think that it's slightly cleaner. Uh, it's also, I'd argue, a bit less intuitive. So I, I just wanna show you guys a, a different approach here. What if we said, let me keep nested arrays instead of just cal uh, calendars, characters in here. Let's say that I found, I saw, I saw this D, so I said, okay, I'm gonna insert a D and then I'll, I'll, I'll say I've seen it once, all right? Well, now I come across my next letter and that's an E. So I can ask myself, is, my, is the last letter that I saw an E? Because if it is, I can just increment it by one. I don't need to add anything on. It's not, this one's unique. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say E and we've seen one of them, okay? We keep going, we see the second one. We see another E and I, again, I check my top element. I peek at the top element. I say, oh, well, those two are equal. So, you know, I'm, I'm gonna change this to two because I've seen one more frequency. Is this frequency equal to K? If it is, we're gonna pop this entire bad boy off. If it's not, we're good, we're all safe. Once we get to this third E, and again, I check the top element of my stack, which also happens to be an E. I say, okay, well, that makes three E's now. Is, you know, is our frequency here equal to K? Yes, it is, oh, damn. Bye-bye, Charlie, okay? 
you're out of there. We do now the D comes along and we check the top element of our stack, which is this one. Okay, let's increase that frequency to two. Is that frequency equal to K? No, it is not. It's still smaller. So we're still good. Okay. And we're going to proceed like this kind of checking the top element as we go. And then eventually we're just going to uh, stick all these together by, by multiplying or repeating this character this many times all the way at the end. So I, I know we took a few extra minutes to kind of to walk through the, the logic here, but I really wanted to make sure that it settles and that it makes sense for you guys. If any of it's unclear, let me know in the comments down below. I'm happy to re-explain it, but I, I think this is a, a relatively obvious yet unintuitive, relatively intuitive, but not obvious approach to solving this problem, right? Um, so if you didn't get it yourself, that's all right. I had to look this one up after when I, I failed a couple methods. So um, I'm just here to pass along the wealth. And so you'll, you'll get this one. I promise the code is going to be super simple. And yeah, I think we're in a, we're in a place where we can jump into it and, and give it a try now. So first thing we want to do, um, we can say something like, um, if not S, um, and I, I'm not sure if we're given a constraint for K. So K is going to be at least two. Okay. Actually, it looks like S is going to have some length as well. Fine. I don't think the error checking will be necessary here, but otherwise you could do something like, uh, if not as just, just return an, an empty string or something. But what we're gonna do right away is I'll, just, I'll get into the stack and I'll say I'm, I'm gonna define the stack um, as follows. And now that we have the stack, we are, we are going to want to jump through and start looking at every single uh, character of this, uh, of this string. So I'll say for C, C for, for character, uh, for C in S. So what are we gonna to wanna to check? We're going to wanna check if the stack's top element is equal to the is equal to the, the character that we're looking at. And just as a reminder, maybe I can leave this note up here. We're gonna want our stack to take some form where we've got a character, I'll call it C1, and it appears N1 number of times. Then we've got another character called C2, which appears N2 number of times, and so on and so forth. So once we get here and I want to ask myself, is this equal to the kind of the final or the last element that we had in the stack? I first need to ask myself, you know, um, if there's a stack. So first off, if stack uh, and, or and rather, let me just clarify, this is checking that the stack is not empty. Uh, and stack of uh, the kind of the final element that we saw, if it's zero element, so its character is equal to C, then what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna say stack negative one, so the top element of the stack, its frequency, we are going to want to increase by one, okay? Once we've done that, we can ask ourselves um, if stack negative one, uh, one, if it's greater than or equal to K, uh, equal to should be sufficient, right? But I'm, I'm almost, I'm overkilling it here. Uh, by saying if it's greater than or equal to K, then we know that we need to pop that off. So I'm gonna have to say stack dot pop, right? Like I said earlier, bye bye Charlie. Too many elements, kind of this, um, too many adjacent letters that are that are that are the same. We got to get that out of here. Um, otherwise, so if it, if it's not equal, and and if, if there's either no elements in the stack, or if the top element of the stack is not equal to the character we're looking at. I'm simply going to want to append to that stack. And what I'll do is I'm gonna put in my character C and my, my first occurrence of it. And so in terms of actually looping through the string, that should be it. Um, I, I don't think I've made any obvious mistakes, at least not yet, I'll, I'll go back and check it after. But again, all that we're really saying is, let's check if there's items, if there are items in the stack. If there are, let's take a look at the, at the top of the stack. And if the top of the stack, meaning the previous character we just saw, um, if it's equal to the character we're at now, let's update the frequency or the count of that character so we can make sure to get rid of it if we have too many of them, all right? So I'm jumping out of there, we've, we've checked everything, and now we need to actually prepare a result. So our result we know is going to be a string, um, and I'm, I'm gonna return it down here. So I'm gonna return the result. And so what we've got now again is we've got a stack that looks something like this. Um, we've got multiple, potentially multiple arrays, each of which contains a character and then a frequency of that character. So what I'm going to want to say is this, is maybe I'll say something for a, array uh, and stack. So for each array, I'm going to want to add to the result the character. So array of zero times the amount of times that it appears, which is array one in that, in that second index. 
And so this should actually get us a result. And this is, I mean, very few lines of code, but I, I think this will do it because again, we're, we're creating and we're initializing an, an empty string. We're going to add to that string, the characters from left to right, as we saw them, uh, each character times the amount of times, that, times the number of times that it, that it appeared uh, consecutively. And so I'm gonna run this and make sure that I, I haven't made any silly errors. And there we go. All right, first time's a charm. Uh, so yeah, guys, that was it. This was problem, like I said, number 1209, remove all adjacent duplicates in string part two. There's a part one you can try as well. Uh, it's easier than this. I believe they're the same, except that K is fixed to the value two. So you don't need to worry about, about different uh, frequencies. But uh, as I said, I think this is a not obvious solution, but it's an intuitive one. It, it's one that makes sense. I, I, I don't think I'm, I mean, I'm not working for NASA after, after showing you guys this one. So any questions though, as always, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what other problems you'd like me to solve and, and whatever else you guys are struggling with. Uh, and this question, by the way, you see here, really popular with Bloomberg, uh, Facebook, Roblox apparently too, uh, Goldman and Google, but Bloomberg in particular is, is big on this one. This is a good question. It's not an easy one by any means, but I know you guys can handle it. So when you see it next time, you're going to crush it. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.